Wheel of Fortune star Vanna White seemed to have everything until a fiery plane changed the course of her life. Vanna White wrote a memoir, Vanna Speaks, in 1987, and in it she described her unconventional childhood growing up in Myrtle Beach. What was odd about it? Well, for starters, her favorite fashion accessory was a live lizard. She wrote, One of my favorite things to do was to put a little string leash around a chameleon's leg, tie the other end to a safety pin, and pin the lizard to me and watch it change to the color of my outfit. She also befriended an alligator that lived in a pond by her grandparents' house. She named it Mr. Bill and fed it raw meat from a barbecue fork. That came to an end, though, after her brother disappeared one day and the family became convinced he had been eaten by Mr. Bill. Luckily, he was okay. But she did learn an important lesson about not screwing around with alligators. Vanna White was incredibly close to her mother, and in her autobiography, she wrote that it was her mother who first nurtured her belief in psychic phenomena. I believe now that we are all psychic to some degree, but that some of us welcome these experiences, while others fear them and shut them out. She also wrote that her mother regularly saw an apparition of her grandmother, a figure that White saw once and described as incredibly disturbing. Also disturbing was the Ouija board, which White says she initially dismissed as a game until she tried it herself, alone and with her eyes closed, to find that it really did spell out messages to her. She put it away and decided it was better to just leave it alone. It's no secret that getting attention in the entertainment business isn't easy, and some people resort to shady measures. In her autobiography, Vanna Speaks, White wrote that she hired a personal manager to help her break into the business, but ended up regretting it. In addition to taking a few years off her age, White said that she felt she was put in an awkward position when he advertised her birthday party in Variety, claiming she'd been signed to break out roles when she absolutely hadn't. White wrote, Though I'd been in Los Angeles just a little over a year, I was slowly, and in some cases, painfully, learning how Hollywood really worked. White ultimately decided to part ways with her manager because she had been raised to be truthful and felt that she was betraying her moral code. Letting a manager lie for me wasn't that much different from me doing the lying myself. Vanna White might be instantly recognizable and a common sight on countless televisions these days, but it didn't come easy. In her memoir, she wrote about how incredibly difficult it was when she was trying to find work in commercials. After going to more than 100 auditions, she had landed zero jobs. I'm a professional model and I'd like to advance my career in this business and I enjoy meeting people. It was so disheartening that she decided something needed to change, so she found a new agent. It ended up working better than she probably expected because she was hired on the first commercial they sent her out to audition for. That, however, probably had more to do with her snappy one-liner than it did with the agency. She shared that during auditions, all applicants are occasionally asked questions, usually to see how a person moved when they knew they were on camera. When she was asked what her plans were for the rest of the day, she responded, I have a gynecologist appointment, but you can't come. She said she not only got a laugh, but she also got the part, without having to do the customary follow-up auditions. Best of all, she was telling the truth. It turned out that for White, staying true to her principles paid immediate dividends. Vanna White has spent decades on the set of what's essentially a massive board game. So did she always enjoy games? The answer is an enthusiastic yes. She told Esquire, I grew up playing games with my mother and dad. Jigsaw puzzles, crossword puzzles, card games, board games, Scrabble, Life, Monopoly. I watched Wheel of Fortune. I was a fan of Wheel of Fortune. In fact, she told InStyle that before she auditioned to be a regular fixture on the show, she had written to the show in an attempt to be selected as a contestant. That didn't work out, but she did get on The Price is Right as a contestant instead. Vanna White! Come on down! You are the first four contestants on The Price is Right! Unfortunately, it wasn't great. Speaking with Larry King guest host Pat Sajak, White revealed that Bob Barker had been rude to her when he mistakenly thought she was just admiring herself in the TV monitor. White said, He said, if you would stop looking in the monitor, maybe you might win something. White explained that she was actually trying to find a friend in the audience who was supposed to help her with her price guesses. But she didn't care for Barker's snark. You're so busy looking at yourself on the monitor, you don't know what's going on. It's hard to imagine Wheel of Fortune with anyone else up there turning those letters. But White wasn't the first. In fact, 
Pat Sajak wasn't the first choice either. The original hosting team was Chuck Woolery and Susan Stafford. When it came time to hire someone new, Vanna White actually threw her name into the proverbial hat at the very end of the selection process. But at least one person didn't think she deserved the job. Sajak! In 2000, Sajak sat in for a vacationing Larry King and interviewed White for CNN. He confessed to White that when he got word that producer Merv Griffin was leaning towards selecting her for the job, he called Griffin and tried to talk him out of it. Now, there was another woman who did the show. I won't mention her name. But while you were tremendously lovely and couldn't have been sweeter, this other woman had a little more broadcast experience and had done some hosting. So I was kind of leaning toward her for that reason. And that's my confession. I voted against you. White admitted that during the audition she had been so nervous that she'd had trouble speaking and recalled being a trembling bunch of nerves. But it turned out White was exactly what Griffin wanted, a glamorous yet down-to-earth girl next door. So we told you we would find our new hostess and now we will officially welcome her. Please do that for Vanna White. Vanna! <laughs> During the early days of Wheel of Fortune, White seemed to have everything going for her. She even found romance, falling in love with the aspiring soap opera actor John Gibson. The two planned to get married. Tragedy struck in 1986, though, when he was killed in a fiery plane crash. White heard about the crash on the TV news. While she was trying frantically to get a hold of the airport, she received a phone call asking for the name of Gibson's dentist. They needed dental records to positively identify his body. Years later, she spoke with People magazine about how she got through the tragedy. She credited Wheel of Fortune fans with being there and helping her through those dark days, saying, I heard from so many people who had shared the same experience of losing someone instantly in an accident, and that really helped me. I didn't feel like I was alone. In a bizarre twist of fate, White's mother had once lost her own fiancé in a car accident just two weeks before their wedding day. Vanna White is as well known for her smile as for turning letters, and she spoke to Dear Doctor about her dental hygiene regimen. Unsurprisingly, she said that it's incredibly important to her and that she's instilling the same good habits into her children. They even have toothbrushes at the kitchen sink, she said, to make brushing more convenient. As for her, she said something that's unthinkable to most people. She loves going to the dentist, which explains why she became a spokesperson for Perfect Smile back in the 90s. She said, I don't have any problems with going to the dentist. For me, it is relaxing, and maybe that is odd to say, but it is true. I am laying in their chair for an hour or however long, getting my teeth cleaned. It is not painful. It is kind of relaxing. She had some advice to pass along, too. Don't forget to brush regularly. Fluoride treatments are a good thing and mouth guards are very helpful if you grind your teeth at night. White admitted that it took her a while to get used to wearing her night guard, but stressed that good habits will last a lifetime. It doesn't get more family-friendly and downright wholesome than Wheel of Fortune, so when Vanna White appeared on the cover of Playboy after five years of turning letters and cheering on contestants, it's safe to say that it was a bit of a scandal. White thought so too, especially since they were old pictures she'd never agreed to have published. So how did it happen? She explained to Fox News that the photos were taken when she was new to Hollywood and in desperate need of some cash that she definitely didn't want to ask her parents for. It wasn't until after Wheel of Fortune made her a household name that Playboy bought the photos, running them in spite of her saying that she absolutely did not want them to see the light of day. White sued to try to get the publication stopped, saying it would tarnish her image. But despite her friendship with publisher Hugh Hefner, Playboy and Hefner refused. She ultimately dropped the lawsuits and went on The Tonight Show to not only apologize, but issue a warning to others. Never do anything that you don't want to do. Listen to your instincts and follow it. White might be the epitome of grace, but she's had her share of slip-ups and mistakes. You just haven't seen most of them. She told Kelly Clarkson that she had been mortified the one and only time she turned the wrong letter around on the board a mistake that led to the whole puzzle being scrapped and replaced with a new one, as contestants started the round again. White spoke to InStyle about some of her other malfunctions, which included a wardrobe issue, where a gift-wrapped Christmas present attached itself to her dress, and she glided gracefully back and forth across the stage, completely oblivious. She's also lost a belt mid-show, stepped on and torn hems, and in her memoir, Vanna Speaks, 
she admitted that one of her worst moments happened during her first season. Saying that she was so excited about congratulating a contestant who had just won a new car, White wrote, I fell flat on my face while the cameras were rolling. I stepped off the puzzle board. I fell. I jumped up, dusted myself off, and walked over to congratulate the winner. When the contestant quipped, did you have a nice trip? I was so embarrassed. Clapping is a natural part of Vanna White's job, and she makes it look both earnest and natural. Watch how often she claps, though, and it's almost hypnotic. She does it more than it seems, too, and she's actually in the Guinness Book of World Records for most frequent clapper. She made it there in 2013, when it was estimated that she had clapped 3,480,864 times during her stint on the show to that point. She's obviously been in many more episodes since then, so let's break this down. Guinness estimated that she claps an average of 606 times per show. And as of the 2023 season, she's been in a whopping 7,740 episodes. That raises her clapping total to an incredible 4,690,440. How many claps is that? If White were to clap once per second, it would take her 54 days, clapping 24 hours a day, to clap that many times. And people have noticed. White wrote in her memoir that she has received letters from parents and grandparents who wrote to tell her that their little ones were obsessed with watching her clap. And who can really blame them?